If you've kept alocasia and a few other types of arrows, you may have found tiny little bulbs in the soil when you're repotting or when you're doing your daily routines. These can be called corms, and corms are the way that these plants can be propagated. So in this video, I'll take a look at some of the ways I use these corms to propagate new little uh, alocasia. So where do you get your corms from? So here's a few examples of um, small-ish alocasia plants that I've uh, pulled some corms off uh, over winter. So I've got a little black velvet over here. Um, I've, just, I've just basically sprayed them all and watered them all. Uh, this is a cupria and we've got a dragon scale. So all of these produce corms. And what you basically do is I've, I've pulled all of um, the corms out of the soil that I can find for these plants, but I'll just give you an idea of how you do it. So uh, if you don't want to disrupt the plant too much, you can just dig through the, the, the soil at the top. And you quite often, with a lot of these, you will find corms buried in the top. Um, and what they look like, let me just find one. There we go. So let me just clean this off for you and show you. So buried in the, the plant under the surface, you're gonna find little bulbs like this. So let me just see if it will focus. Um, and these little things, they basically have a top and a bottom. So this bit is attached to the plant at the back here, and they just come off and you basically just pop them off. It's super, super easy. And um, and they're, they're the corms you're looking for. So they just look like little bulbs and that's, that's exactly what they are. They're basically little bulbs um, that we're going to now collect and, and grow on. So sometimes what I do is I might have to tip the plant out and you might have to I'll just get the focus back in. So sometimes you might have to literally pull the plant out and you might have to tip it out and actually dig through the soil um, or the or depending on whatever substrate you've got, whether it be mix of perlite or or um, or something like pond. Now, I, I, I don't get as many uh, bulbs or as many corms out of uh, plants that are in pond. I find the soil and the soil and perlite mix seems to make them want to produce more. I don't know whether that's, you know, whether that's just me personally or whether that's the same for everyone. But I find that most of my allocation do well in, in a soil and, and perlite mix and they do produce. So what do we do with these? So let's collect up a load of these and I'll show you how I keep them over winter and then how I then propagate them. So over winter, what I'll do is I'll, I'll keep the, the bulbs just in a dry place like this. You can keep them in dry soil. Um, it doesn't really matter. I just have a, a, a like a big envelope that I keep them all in. So I know that they're, they're coolish, that they're, 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 not, they're not in any kind of like heat. They're just in a, in a, a little plastic bag in a cool place. Um, and then what I do is I try and plant them all in one go um, so that I get them all coming up at the same sort of time or, or I do it in batches. So, for example, this is an Alocasia Zabrina. So this one um, I took from home and then I take each of the corms and I soak it for a day. Just literally completely submerge it in water um, and then they come out a little tiny bit moist. And then what happens then is with your nail, you can just peel back um, all of the covering. And now you don't have to do this, um, but I find that I get more success with them if I do. And I just peel it back like so. Um, I, don't, I don't do the bottom. So the bottom is where, let me just show you, this one's a bit dry, so this might be a little bit harder. The bottom is where it comes off the plant. So this is what's attached to the, to the roots of the plant. So some of that will just come off like that if it's too dry. So then, presuming it's damp enough or wet enough, you can just slowly scrape round. Don't damage the top if you can help it, because it may have already started sprouting if you if you haven't noticed it. Um, so just peel around the top like so. Um, see if I can get any closer for you, like so. So it looks like a little onion when it's finished. And most of them look like this, and there are varying different sizes. So I just peel it like that. There's another one done. And then just open this one. If they're not, again, if they're not, um, 
if it's not coming off easily, then you probably want to soak them a little bit longer. These haven't been soaked, actually, I've just noticed. But say I've got those prepared now. Um, that is actually one that probably won't sprout. That was probably too young when I took it off. So that's the Zabrina. And then I would do the same with the Alocasia Dragon Scale. They all look very, very similar here. And I do the same with the Black Velvet. And then what I do is let me just move this um, tub over and I'll move these to the side and we'll prepare them one by one. So this is my propagation uh, station just for alocasia. Um, I do put some bulbs in it, so you can see there I've put a couple of, um, uh, basically they're, they're aroids, the aracema. So these are like, um, usually jack in the pulpit or something like that. I sometimes do these in here. If I want one or two to sprout quite quickly, I'll put them in here. But what is here? So this is just a plastic box with a lid, with dividers that uh, comes out, so the water goes underneath. I fill it full of perlite when I'm starting the season and then just fill it almost up to the top, not quite up to the top. This is probably too high because it will evaporate. And the lids, the lid keeps the humidity in. So it's a, it's like a sealed container and it's, it's watertight at the bottom. But any cup will do. I sometimes, I used to do it with plastic cups and just fill it full of perlite. Um, and then I label the, the, the different ones. And then, so for example, this one here is Alocasia Zabrina down here in the corner. So I'll take the corms the side that was from the root, plant it down, and I just stick it into the to the perlite like that. Um, basically, that's all I have to do. Um, just clip that top off one, like so. Make sure I don't push it in too far. So I want the I want the water going up the base of the of wh wh where the root was. Um, and be careful because if you haven't if if the water is um, uh, perlite floats so there is some water space underneath this so sometimes these can get pushed through too deep and they disappear um, so we'll pop all of these in here that's all of the Zabrina and then we'll do the I haven't got many dragon scales I've only this is the first time I've had a dragon scale actually um, and again if they aren't peeled enough you can just soak them in, either in here in this tub or you can, you can just soak them in water, just drop them in water. I just probably normally just drop them in water over here for a day or two. Um, this this one again, this one's not ready yet. So what I'll do is, I'll, oh no it is, it is, it's dry. When I say not ready, it, it, it's too dry to peel it off safely without damaging what's going on underneath. Um, but you don't have to fully peel them. They're not, you know, it, it, it absolutely can work without you doing this. But I just find I get a bit more success when I do it. So there's another one. It's a dragon scale. And final one. Third one. And then we'll do black velvet. And we've already done the cupria there already in there. I did them before I started this video. And then we'll just we'll just leave these under a grow light. So these will go under a grow light um, probably about 10 hours a day. And we'll just see what happens uh, after a few weeks. So here we are uh, six weeks later. I think uh, the first video was on the 11th of February and it's now the end of March, just coming into April. Um, what I'm going to do now is, uh, depending on how each individual corm has grown, um, I'll either transfer it into um, something like this, which is a, a small prop station, or I'll leave it in here to, to carry on. So let's take a close look and just see what we've got and see see how things are going. So, so the Zabrinas are doing well. We've got uh, one, two, three of them that have sprouted quite well. I think one died there underneath, you can see. So we'll move those. Um, the dragon scales are, we've got all, or two of them have sprouted and one probably might need a bit more peeling. Um, I added um, uh, this one, which is a Hilo Beauty. This is the, um, uh, I think it's an allocation. now, it used to be a Caladium. Um, but this one's taken very, very quickly. I don't think I showed that in the original video. The, uh, the white callas have done well, so the little corms from them have done well. There's one two, one died, one, one just rotted away here in the corner. Um, and the black velvet are just starting to sprout, so they've probably been the worst. Uh, they're, they're taking their time. This is actually um, an avocado, it's got nothing to do with this project here. 
Um, and the Cupria, uh, they're slow, but okay. I've already transferred a couple of them, but they're doing okay. But you can see some of them. So like the 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 Alocasia zebrina um, has really sprouted well. So these are looking, you know, you've got one, two, three, four roots on them, um, uh, and they're growing. They're starting to come out now. So um, not good if you drop them, is it? So so what I do with these now is I generally then relabel um, uh, an area inside the the moss prop box. And I just pop them on the surface with their roots just popping into the moss, um, as you can see. Uh, you can just about see there, it sits on the surface. Um, so let's get another one. So that was a Zabrina. We'll take this one as well. So take another one, just super, super careful with it. And pop it on the surface so it's sticking up like that. So I don't bury them, I don't need to bury them at all. Let's take another one. Take this last one. See that there, and then again, just pop it on the surface. You can see the three of them lined up there. Hopefully, it's not very clear. Let me zoom in for you. Still isn't very clear, but you can see there that they're on the surface, and they they will because they're already rooted now. They'll take really well. We'll take the Hilo Beauty out because he's definitely got some roots on him now. So he's got a one, two, three all across. He's got two leaves out already. So again, pop him on the surface, make sure the roots are in contact with the, with the moss. And he'll, he's already taken, so he'll, he'll, he'll only be another few weeks and he'll be out into his own pot. Um, now the calla lilies, I'll probably leave them actually. Um, not too worried about, in fact, no, no I won't, because they've got some nice growth. They'll be hitting the top soon. So I'll pop them, them in there as well. And again, we don't need to worry about burying them. If they've got a root system, they'll find their way into the into the sphagnum moss. So I don't worry about those. And then the dragon scales. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I can probably leave the dragon scales for now. Maybe on the next video I'll move them. Um, and the cupria. There's just one there that actually I'll move that one. There's there's one already gone in there. So that's two of them in there. So that leaves the black velvets. Um, uh, there's a couple more let's have a look what's that there's a couple more of the um zebrinas still to come out i'll just reposition them on the surface i'm going to leave all the dragon scales the rest of the dragon scales until they've really established um and then um and then that's everything else so it doesn't take long so it's a, it's a useful way of doing it with this little box um so we'll give it a few more weeks and then we'll look at how both these and these are doing for the final part of the video so next update um empty so yeah we didn't kill them all or they didn't die although you would think with some of this sludge that, that, that there might be a few deaths what actually happened was almost everything outgrew the box so that is one thing to bear in mind when you're picking your boxes how, how much height because as soon as these combs take off they they start to to um leap and here's the result so let's just quickly walk through it so we've got one let's see two three four zebrinas so let me just pull them up and show you how how quickly they have grown so that's the extent of the um just get the focus right for you that's the extent of their root system which is massive now um and the leaves are all coming on nicely so I move them at this point to these sort of like smaller prop boxes um, and I just put them in a, a mix of um, basically just sphagnum and perlite. Uh, there's all sorts in here from the corn box. So I don't even know what this one was or I've forgotten what this one was. So I'll have to look this one up. Um, but this is, you know, this is tiny little corn, tons of good roots and this lovely leaf. So I'm going to have to check what that is because um, I actually didn't label that one. And then the bigger box, there's quite a lot in here. So there's the Hilo Beauty. So that one's taken off incredibly well. Um, that's got three or four leaves coming through already. These are all of the callas, the white, um, the white arums, um, arum lily. Uh, this one hasn't done so well. These are the dragon scales. Now they are, they have all been moved in into here because I'm shutting down the corn box now, but they they have all sprouted. Um, over here we've got uh, another zebrina and a black velvet. 
these aren't from the corn box, these ones in the corner. These are just from my um, uh, Hederaceum collection. So we've got a number of them in here as well. So we've got a Gabby. Uh, it's my first time of having a Gabby. Um, a White Knight. Um, what's that? A, a, a Hederaceum Variegated and a Cream Splash. But yeah, this is this is how I move them from the corn box to a prop box and how they then start their life as a full plant. So you can see they're all doing extremely well. Um, and some of them, like the Hilo Beauty, are doing incredibly well. So they, you know, it doesn't take long, a matter of weeks, and you can bring your corns on uh, and get stunning results.